Hello everybody, this is Budridge and I just uh, uploaded a new script to the Bud Labs uh, organization. It's, uh, I never made a script with this long file name, I don't know why I did it, but it just happened. And now it is official, public, it's on AUR, it's called Vivaldi Auto Inject Custom JS UI. And that, that is the actual command here. So. There. <laughs> Don't ask, don't ask, I, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and I guess the file name here says um, what, it's, uh, what it does. It auto-injects uh, custom JS to the Vivaldi uh, UI. What that means, some viewers might know exactly what it means. Because I made uh, videos uh, a while ago. I guess it was here. Was it in June? It feels like it was much longer ago I, I i don't know whatever um about how i have set up and customized uh, vivaldi because vivaldi have this uh what the, i guess this is what is special with vivaldi is that it all its ui elements meaning like the user interface you know like the tabs here and and the things like this um the status bar here, all of that is, is built with um, web, uh, the web stack, basically HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And it is also possible to, the CSS is very easy to, uh, to edit and override the, the UI CSS. I have a video about that here in this playlist. I will link this playlist for those interested who didn't know about this. Uh, but it is also possible to inject uh, custom JavaScript into the UI, which is what I have done to get my extension buttons here. You see here I have uBlock Origin, for example. I have that uh, button here in the status bar. It is actually supposed to be in the address bar, which I have hidden. I have hidden it with CSS, but I have moved, moved the extension buttons with uh, a JavaScript. Uh, and I also ma made a video about this. It's this one, I believe, add mods to Vivaldi browser. That is like, in that video, I, I really go in, into detail how, how this works. Now I will show you uh, this uh, custom UI thing script here because that is really uh, an update to to a script we made in that video uh, because with this playlist i also created this repository called vivaldi rising i believe it's linked in in those videos uh, this is on the budridge uh, organization because why not uh, and here i i have all, all customizations and some scripts and stuff because I, I I do a lot of other things like launching Vivaldi in a special way setting up setting it up with a Python web server so I can execute external commands from within Vivaldi and, and stuff like that but we whatever but here I also have this Vivaldi UI uh, um, directory here is also in text how to uh, configure this, the CSS. Uh, I will update this now with this uh, new method of updating the JavaScript. Because prior to this, I, I did this, have this directory with the script here and the JavaScript I want to inject to Vivaldi. Here we can see that uh, JavaScript, you can see it's very short. It, it basically just takes the, the extension button element and moves it into the status bar and just does some tests to make sure that it can do this and just to be clear here this is a this is a hack and there is a big drawback using this is that if you would ever uh, go in full screen with the browser using the browser's built-in full screen you can i think you can use like i3 full screen but not the browser full screen for example, if you play a YouTube video and you click the full screen button, if you do that, then it just works out and you have to restart the browser. That's the only drawback I have found, but I know it's a kind of a super annoying one. <laughs> but it almost never happens to me now when I know about it. But just, just so you know, this is a hack just to get these buttons because I'm an idiot, you know. But I like it like that and there are other uh, JavaScript modifications you can do. Maybe I have even linked it here in, in the readme here. 
because there is a uh, or maybe I haven't here on the Vivaldi forum so I guess I should make a post there about this new thing here you can find a lot of other uh, JavaScript modifications here in, in the Vivaldi forums for example and there are also on, on um, GitHub you can find a lot it, it was a long time since I looked into this but there there's a lot of things you can do but there is a big drawback, uh, or drawback, but one annoying thing uh, using this is that every time you update Vivaldi, you have to uh, manually also update your custom JavaScripts. This doesn't apply to, to this custom CSS because that is automatically handled by uh, um, Vivaldi. It's very uh, convenient actually with the CSS stuff, but the JavaScript stuff, not so convenient at all actually. And this just happened to me that I updated Vivaldi and then uh, what happens is that my, my extension buttons here, they just disappear since I don't have an address bar either. Uh, and this time I thought I will fix this, but I will also look into how Pacman hooks uh, works, uh, which is a um, really cool thing uh, that is available in Pacman. I believe this is available in other package managers as well. Maybe works slightly different, but in short, uh, you can create these hooks that get executed on uh, package events. For example, every time you install a package matching uh, a name or something, then it will execute a command or when you up update a package or when you remove a package. It's uh, very easy to set these uh, hooks up. So I set up a hook for uh, for this um, for Vivaldi. So every time it is updated, it will also uh, execute a script, this new script, because that automatically updates uh, these uh, JavaScript things here. I had to rewrite it a bit. I felt to make it uh, saner and what what not, whatever. Because now you can do a couple of more things than than the old one, because the old old uh, script here. It, it only installed uh, it installed all JavaScripts in the same uh, directory as this uh, shell script. Uh, but this new one, it instead uh, creates an, a new directory every time you add a, a JavaScript with uh, this Vivaldi auto inject custom JS dash UI. Every time you install a, a, a JavaScript with that, it will add that to this um, special directory here. USR share Vivaldi UIJS and it does this to keep track of uh, which JavaScripts uh, the user have manually uh, installed and I needed to add it to this uh, system directory and not keep it in the home directory or anything for it to work with the hooks as well since the hook doesn't when the hooks are executed it, it's executed by the root user you know you sudo uh, upgrade your system and then it, it gets tricky to know uh, the, the user directory and get access to it. And, and it is also very not recommended to do so. So it's much better to keep these uh, files in the this directory here. Uh, but it searches this when you execute it without any uh, command line arguments uh, and then updates all, all JavaScripts here to Vivaldi. You can also remove uh, um, files here. So what I will show you here now is we'll go to this directory where I have this uh, ext instead or you know what we do this instead. Let's uh, re uh, up update uh, Vivaldi so we can see this in action how it works here because now I believe I don't have the hook call so I should make sure it isn't active here. No. So pacman is Vivaldi sudo that will uh, update Vivaldi and since I already have the latest version installed it will just update it using the, the uh, package cache here so we, it will not need to download anything or and so so it's very quick and Vivaldi is still running here so we have to restart it to, to get our updated version so to speak but there this is the updated version and this is how it looks for me uh, every single time. I, you can see now the extension buttons are gone here in the status bar and the only way to uh, add them was to uh, to add them to this 
we can see this uh, here. I have the full path here. Opt Vivaldi resources. Vivaldi, this is where uh, your custom um, JavaScript files should be located. Uh, right now, there are no custom JavaScript files, and you should you also need to add them to this browser.html file in this list here. And this is what uh, my script now does automatically. So, if we navigate to this directory again, I guess we are there, uh, and then we execute the script Vivaldi uh, auto inject custom JS UI. I think if we just execute this now without anything. We we'll probably exit uh, saying that it uh, doesn't find any any files to to inject. Yeah, script. Yeah, and, and it also needs to be executed as, as root since it mani manipulates um, files uh, here in the system directories. So you need to execute it as sudo. But it's uh, completely open source. It's just a short uh, bash script. If if you don't trust this, just uh, audit uh, the file. Don't worry, it doesn't do anything uh, nasty, I hope, or it doesn't. <laughs> so install this uh, executed with sudo, but now it says could not find any JS files to inject, add files to either this directory or as argument to this command. So if we pass a file as an argument to this uh, command, for example, this ext in status here, then it should uh, uh, it should both add them now to this usr share vivaldi ui js directory which it also creates if it doesn't exist it will add it to this directory and it will add it to the browser.html uh, file here if everything works correctly there we can see it added this file here it updated the file here it also added it here and now we can just uh, it also added the hook Probably most importantly, now since that is the new thing here, it also and this is how the hook looks like. By the way, it's very easy. You set what kind of operations you want uh, this hook to trigger on, and you can set three. Uh, there are three different operations: install, upgrade, or remove. I believe it's called. And then target what what files to look for uh, changes in. I think this is. Uh, notice no leading slash here because this this refers to the uh, uh, package uh, file tree and not the system file tree. Uh, and then you see here description uh, injecting custom JavaScript and it, you can either do post transaction or pre transaction meaning before or after uh, the operation uh, is done. And we want to do this after we have upgraded and here exec this is automatically created here when when it creates this uh, hook now I, now I execute this script is actually located here it's a sim link to to this file but if you install this from AUR or with the make file it will be a different path here but it's the same thing it will automatically create the, the correct path to it here and that can be in the user directory it, it doesn't matter uh, and then it will execute this script without any arguments every time uh, uh, um, Vivaldi is updated. You could also see here now, if we execute it without any arguments, we will not get any errors. Now it will just simply just update. But since everything is already in order, it shouldn't, it doesn't really do anything, but that, that's fine. So if we restart Vivaldi here now, we should see the extension buttons. And there they are. And now if I would uh, reinstall Vivaldi again, yes, we can now also see, hmm, that the command failed to execute correctly. That's not good. Wonder what that is about. Uh, let's see, browser. No, it looks fine here. Okay, I have to look into that why it uh, throws an error there, but uh, it looks like everything is working. It installed the extensions. They are not removed now, even if I have updated Vivaldi. I will look into this and see what it is. It's probably, I probably missed something in the script here. I'll not do it in the video. Uh, so that's why I will do it now in the video here. I uh, guess program here. 
What could it be? What could it be? Maybe it's this install hook here uh, that thr throws an error or return. Wonder if this just want to try this. Just do this instead. Huh. No. No, that. Okay. No. Perfect, no problem. Yeah, it probably was, you know, the install hook script here. It takes, uh, if the hook is already installed, that function will not really do anything. It will just return here. And I wonder if that was what was um, causing this. So just adding a exit zero there, there to the main file, solve this. This isn't in the uh, current release, but I will add that because it is available, as I mentioned, on AUR and, and uh, on GitHub. And it makes it really easy now to manage these uh, uh, custom hooks. I, I don't actually use any, any other uh, modifications than this one, but if I wanted now, uh, I could also remove this. Uh, Vivaldi auto inject. Uh, remove and then you have to say the the name of it here like ext in status dot js and then it will remove that from all locations even uh, yeah this and this and this and everywhere meaning I now have to re-add it you can also do Vival and for this you don't need sudo of course because you can do Vivaldi auto inject and then list will just print a list of all uh, installed modifications you've got but uh, the whole reason I did this was uh, to, to, to get this uh, hook set up uh, correctly and I thought why not update this with, with the script that I have uh, on, on github and make this somewhat more a more proper thing you know so now it should just uh, things should just work uh, trademark symbol you know <clears throat> um, when you install this um, since it it uh, does stuff here in the in the user directory especially this it creates this usr share vivaldi ui js that is nothing weird with that i believe on arch but i wonder if if uh, on uh, uh, for example, Debian-based uh, distributions, you you would like it to be USR local, or local, or how is it? USR local share. I think that's where they want this stuff. And I made it so that when you install it here with the make file, it, it uses this prefix, which I defaulted to the arch default here, but... I know that Linux default or whatever should be user slash local, but I never bother. Uh, if you change the prefix here, which you can do by changing the uh, um, this variable in, in make, you know, make prefix and then equals USR local, then it will also um, use M4 to change that in the program itself. It will update this thing here. It will replace these two with the prefix prefix you have set in the in the man page and use that uh, throughout the script when when it creates these uh, 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 system directories so they should get uh, placed in the right in quotation marks <laughs> location um, just so you know so it should work uh, on other browsers and probably other other uh, unix like systems as well I have no idea how Vivaldi works on, on for example, BSD, but I guess it, it works if Chromium works, you know. 
whatever, th that's something I've been fiddling with here today. Um, it was interesting, and finally, I, I have never looked into uh, these Pac-Man hooks, and they are, it's so easy uh, to, to set, set it up. It's really good to know just how it works and, and how to do it. And apparently this is the system uh, hook uh, directory. You can also place them in other uh, locations we open uh, pacman conf here quickly pacman.conf we can see that there is this one is commented out by default uh, but you can set the hook deal uh, value here then add hooks to a, a, a custom directory where where it's more um, proper to add like custom hooks like this in many ways but I didn't want to use that since that directory do actually doesn't even exist by default. You have to create that directory and it, it would also mean that I would have to uncomment this variable in the pacman conf and stuff with my script and I really didn't want to do that. So instead I just install it to this uh, always uh, available uh, hook directory. And it also of course only does this on Arch if pacman is installed. It, it tests if this uh, directory uh, lib al pm hooks if that exists then it will do all this installing hook stuff so don't worry if you try this on a different distribution it will just uh, get ignored uh, the, the installing hook function um, yeah that's that uh, quite a lot of, of talk for such a simple small little script but there you you have it you have it Let's open the GitHub again. I kind of regret the name here, but whatever. Uh, I, I also don't know what to call it. And it's not like a script that uh, you execute. You, if you execute this script uh, manually more than five times, then that's weird. That's weird. It's, it's, uh, it's just so you know what it is. And it's good that it's long so you don't accidentally execute it or whatever. Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know, whatever. Um, and Vaxu, I thought maybe V A C J U F, whatever, whatever, really. This is the name. This is the name. Okay, that's all I have to say. I could say that uh, the bar, I, I am uh, procrastinating here a bit, uh, thinking about how to do with it. You see, it's a little bit higher if, if you have, have an eye for detail than, than my bar has been in a long while because I have always had a, a status bar or task bar or whatever with the exact same height as the window title than having it overlaying like this but I felt with these buttons and stuff it, it, and the eyes and, and things like that having a, a, a title bar with this size uh, or a taskbar with that size got too cramped so so I actually bumped the size up here a couple of pixels meaning that it doesn't now perfectly overlay the title bar but I actually think this this is fine I don't think it looks uh, off or broken but uh, there are actually four pixels here that I don't see which is, it is a bit weird, but I think I will just live with this because the, the solutions around it is um, also a bit weird. One solution would of course be not to have it overlay like, like this. I don't know, XFCE. XFCE for panel restart. So if I restart it, it will not overlay. And I had it running like this uh, and thought this actually also is not that bad. I kind of like this. I, I don't think this looks uh, off either. Uh, but that is on this uh, monitor. Now I have my computer in a docking station, but um, it's only a, a 11 6 inch uh, 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 screen on that uh, laptop. Then this all of a sudden, that, that actually matters uh, a bit, you know. Uh, so I don't want it on the laptop, but I want it on the, don't matter on the desktop. I, I don't know. This is, I, sh I shouldn't think too much about these things, right? 
but I think I will keep it like this. This is also cool. This is my style, you know, this is the Bud Lab trademark. No one else does this. Um, I think it's, uh, it's smart, whatever. But I also have added here some uh, placeholder modules, which I will create here for audio in, audio out, uh, girl, which is like uh, information about internet stuff uh, and not uh, bandwidth and stuff like that but when i download a file and things like that should get reported here bwp for wallpaper stuff and media for media information stuff over here all of those will be like uh, script uh, scripty thingies also testing this uh, variant here with um, small buttons instead of, of having the um, labels visible I don't know I don't think it matters that much either I was also thinking that maybe maybe going with this style I have just thought about it I haven't really tested it but it shouldn't be a add because there is this uh, 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 window menu it is almost like a taskbar but instead you get a menu now the menu is here. Huh. Okay. And let's add it to task. God damn it. What happened there? Window buttons. Let's add it there. Yeah, there it is. I don't really want to hide the buttons. Let's just move them here. You can see this. Because then you get a single button just only showing the active uh, window. Now this isn't hooked up with my Dirtac here, so I'm not really... I, I guess I can just activate a visible window here. It shouldn't be a problem. But then you just see the icon of the active window and you can open this and, and change all, all the windows from one single menu. Wondering if this isn't more this isn't better and then have a module here this, that could display the window title or something uh, and I would also like it so that I then could use alt tab you know the classic uh, windows uh, key to switch programs and that alt tab once should bring up this menu and then keep on tabbing to to change items here that would kind of be uh, neato I don't know because this taskbar, it gets a bit messy and I'm not really sure. The, because this uh, this does the exact same thing uh, in a more minimal. Well, there's a bug. <laughs> I right click, uh, clicked an item. Uh, and now this menu here. Yeah. Okay, I guess I should uh, report that. God damn it. Always on top. Move, move, move. Okay, no problem. Yeah, that's our that are things that I uh, mess around with. I also am <laughs> experimenting a lot, you know, with my audio equipment. I told you about uh, and have been fiddling around with the jack uh, stuff and things like that but I don't want to talk about it since I don't know what I'm doing at all there it's uh, it's all a big confusing mess both for you and for me so instead we play a bit of the juice harp and then we call it a day okay Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.